Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to a quick look at the new Default Editor. Uh, today, at the GDC, King, the team behind the Default Game Engine, just announced the public release or pre-release of their new updated version of their game editor for the Game Engine Default. Now, Editor 2.0, as it's called, um, is a complete rewrite. The original engine was written in um, the, using the Eclipse IDE as its base. Here, you can see it in action. A little dated at times, a little ugly at times, but functional. Now, there were some uh, you know, quips and quirks, but the biggest thing is they wanted to do a rewrite to make it, you know, a better platform going forward, more stable, uh, you know, better performance, those kind of things. So this new release is not all about new functionality. For the most part, it's actually still catching up to the first editor. Now, the great news is, though, that Editor 1 and Editor 2 are 100% compatible with each other. So you can switch between the two as much as you want. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into Editor 2. You can actually download this guy from the dashboard. When you go to pick which version to download, drop it down and pick either 1 or 2.0 to install. Uh, you'll find that the actual install folder is much cleaner than the old version. I'm going to just go ahead and fire up the editor now. All right, so here is the new launch screen for the default engine. As you can see, you can launch from the dashboard or from disk, which is kind of nice. And you've got your recently used projects. Now, the weird thing is someone is already showing duplicates. So do be aware there are some glitches, some bugs to work out. Uh, so I'm going to fire up. This is just a standard side scrolling demonstration that they've got. And here is the new editor. Now, as I said earlier, there's not a lot of new functionality here. This is a just a cleaner UI. It is more performant. It works better. Uh, I find it cleaner. You can see that they've gone with a dark theme as opposed to the existing um, very Spartan Eclipse looking theme. Uh, but you'll notice here if we come into the same editor. So if I come here, open up that uh, same collection. Here is your editor now. Now here is an example of one of the bugs that exist. First off, I can't always select items properly. And when I do select items, for example, this guy, I can move it that way but I can't move it that way. Now this is a bug, it's written as a known issue, and it basically would require me to set the position using uh, keys at this point, which is obviously not an ideal workflow, and this is one of those things that are gonna be fixed. But do be aware, this is a pre-release for a reason. There are a number of known issues, they're reported on GitHub, so if you do start off with the editor, do be sure to check that out, because you will see um, you know, a lot of these issues are reported and are being worked on. Now, the nice thing is the team behind the default game engine are pretty responsive for these things, so do expect the editor to improve at a pretty quick pace. Um, they've also changed a little bit on the way that um, commits work, uh, so it will commit all at once now. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for you to work with, but, um, you know, the functionality really hasn't changed much. I think frame selection is new. Uh, basically, it zooms in the um, around whatever item you happen to have selected, such as this collection of uh, small planets here. Um, there is now a hot reload option, so you can actually change assets, save them, and then reload without updating your game. Uh, but for the most part, the editor is pretty much the same editor, just a rewrite, a little bit faster, a little bit cleaner, a lot more bugs for the time being, uh, but a lot more potential down the road. Uh, and we can also see, if we come in here to things like editor, so here's an input map. You'll notice now the new bindings, it's a lot prettier, a lot nicer to work with. Same way as here when we've got things selected. Um, the forms just work a little bit better. You've got a little bit more control. You've got these uh, automatically jump to uh, or expand upon outline um, navigations going on. So it's the same thing, just cleaner and built for the future. So uh, that is the engine, the default editor 2.0 that was released to public beta today. Uh, again, it's 100% compatible. So if you do want to check it out, you can work with your existing sources. They work off the same project file, so you're not going to corrupt anything. And you can jump back at any time. Now, the cool thing also to go with this release, and one of the biggest problems probably with the default engine for a lot of people right now, is the lack of plugins. Um, so if you wanted to add add mob functionality or uh, Google Analytics or various other SDKs, you want to support you know proprietary code or extend things beyond the engine, you've never really had that opportunity. It's never really been built in. Uh, it is now, which is nice. So what they've got, and again, this is an early beta feature, uh, but coming now are native extensions. You can read about them here. There's a, the manual is up now for how to do it. And what this is, is native C++ built code. And what you do is a little bit different of approach. And unfortunately, it doesn't work for Windows right now. So far, it only works on Android, Mac OS, and iOS. Um, so I can't really demonstrate it to you. But you can come into the editor itself, go to your preferences, 
and you can turn extensions on right here. And you notice the build server URL? Well, that's kind of key to how these things work because ultimately they take your C++ code, compile it on their servers. So when you do your build, it'll automatically build the extensions for you. Uh, so this means that it's gonna be pretty easy to share extensions uh, and they're gonna be you know, non-programmers are going to be able to work with them or they're having to build custom, you know, they won't have to do local compiles or anything else. It's all handled server side. Now, an extension, an example of an extension is given in this actual uh, link here, this in this manual entry for it, but it's just a project hierarchy like so. At the root level, you have a uh, .manifest file, which is a YAML, Y-A-M-L, uh, markup, you know, kind of descriptor of what your extension is. Otherwise, you put your source in it, your C++ source code, and it does the builds for you. There's pretty good documentation on it, and there's a couple of examples out there. This is one I pulled off GitHub earlier today. Here's a video player uh, example that was done up. So you'll notice, uh, okay, there's a dot .project. I actually want, there's the extension. So this extension, this actual directory right here with its particular contents would be just dumped right into your project file. So if I wanted to add an extension to my project, I could quite literally grab that guy, copy it, go over here to my root directory, paste it, and I now have an extension in here. Again, this isn't working on Windows right now, but that's all that would be involved in installing an extension. So now this actual code, so C++ code, code down behind the scenes, there's no editor, but oh, there it is, actually opened up. Um, this is an example C++ file implementing a video player, for example. And now when I go ahead and click build, if this worked on Windows, what this would do is fire off the appropriate compilers on the default servers, turn this into a plugin for you, and send it back down to you. So that's where native extensions are coming in. It's, it's, it gives you the ability to write C++ code to extend the functionality of the default game engine, uh, but the code and the compilation process and all of that stuff is handled on their servers. I don't know if they're gonna make a local tool chain for you can do it yourself. I'm not sure what the status is there, uh, but this approach does make sense, especially for the whole, uh, you know, distributing it to different people, making it so that you can create and share extensions easily and that you don't need to be that technical to actually consume an extension. Uh, for most people, the end user that isn't writing them, it again is literally a matter of extending, enabling extensions and then dropping this, like the folder, the appropriate, um, there should be a manifest file right there. And then of course the C++ code that is the bulk of the extension in the right directory structure and it will be compiled and handled for you. And at this point in time, you will now in your Lua code be able to use your extension. So in this case, um, it would be, you know, video player dot play or whatever, the, the actual um, different modules. So you see your module methods, open, close, update, get info, and get frame are all going to be registered. So those functions are now all going to be available for your script to use. So that's one of the big um, handicaps of the current default engine, the lack of extensibility. You know, if your whole revenue model is built around, you know, a revenue source that isn't supported by default out of the box, you were screwed. Now you are not any longer. The extensibility is there. Uh, there's a lot more that you can now do. Again, this is a fairly early feature and unfortunately it is only available on those platforms I listed earlier, iOS, Android, uh, Mac, and iOS, Android, Mac. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so hopefully we see Windows soon and there are also some limitations to the actual implementation right now. Uh, again, they're all available here in the documentation, I believe at the very bottom. Uh, so as I said, they only got those three platforms going. Android does not support Java or JAR files yet. Um, very minimal implementation. So it's a start, it's, you know, if your, um, if your extension crashes, which mine surely is going to actually right now because it's not actually supported. So if I go ahead and do a build on this, we're gonna have some kind of a problem. Yeah, we go. So the, the errors we're getting back, uh, failed to build engine internal server error status 500, not the most informative error you've ever seen. And that is no doubt one of the problems with this current release. So do expect it to uh, improve in time. Uh, if you're not writing extensions and you're just consuming them, this is gonna be a pretty pleasant environment. As a development environment, it's gonna be a little awkward to start with, but now that functionality, that extensions functionality is a huge deal. It's great to see in the default engine. So, um, you know, GDC announcements, these things are early. They're kind of an experimental stage yet. You know, this is where we're going, but do expect some warts and bugs, but they're definitely nice improvements. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. That's the default editor 2.0 and native extensions, um, you know, coming for the default game engine. Uh, both pretty cool, both things you can play with today if you have the right platforms. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Goodbye.